So can you explain to us the structure of the strength training programs, the fitness programs that you coach currently? Well, I do um, kind of an ongoing postpartum class. Like I I keep it really open-ended to be like any point postpartum. And that's kind of my starter class that I have women come to um, before they move into my strength and conditioning program. So that's where I teach all the strategies, alignments, the piston breathing, um, their everyday positioning, how they sit, you know, how they're carrying their baby. I go over baby wearing, like, or, okay, if we're going to wear the baby, let me show you how to actually do it. And don't feel like you have to wear the baby all day, every day. And I had a baby that like needed to be worn all the time. And I'm sure that contributed to some of my diastasis too, because I wasn't really wearing him well in alignment. Um, um, and then I start introducing movements that would probably freak out a lot of my, like, <laughs> a lot of my colleagues. But, I mean, I will have them do, like, farmer carries. You know, a lot of these women have never even seen a cowbell before. And they're like, what the heck are you giving me right now? I'm like, well, you have to carry your car seat. So you might as well learn to do it well here in the gym with a cowbell. So, um, and then I get them squatting and you know, really like learning how to create a dynamic relationship between breath and pelvic floor and movement. A lot of them are like, oh, it makes sense now when they do it in a squat or when they do it like with a wall push up or, um, you know, a hip thrust or something like that. So kind of teach them about rib positioning and pelvis positioning, both in standing, but also in movement. So a lot of them have come from a variety of backgrounds where they're told, well, at this mommy, you boot camp class I went to after my first, this is what I was told to do. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay. Um, a lot of work to do. Yeah, a lot of work. So I just, I undo a lot of bad habits and build a lot of new ones. From there, um, it's my hope that they can kind of, if they want to join me, whether it's personal training, remote programming or in my class, they're at least empowered with the tools to do whatever kind of um, fitness they want to do. And also if they haven't seen, like, I get a lot of people that want to get back into running and I just say, okay, but go get cleared by a pelvic floor physical therapist first and let them kind of progress you just so that you can have peace of mind because I would hate for you six months from now or a year from now to have your running uh, career derailed from something that you didn't fix early on or that you created. I love it. So you coach that, the more entry-level program, and then you have a a higher-level strength program too? Right. And so that's where, you know, I have them doing a lot of, like, powerlifting moves, like squats, deadlifts, presses, um, you know, work with the kettlebell, and for lack of better words, like, functional movement. So they're doing everything from pull-ups and push-ups to heavy squats and deadlifts to running to rowing to biking, whatever it may be. Um, pretty versatile, very similar to CrossFit. Um, And then I I do work with CrossFit athletes, but more on an individual um, level. Awesome. So Um, so great. Very cool. Okay. Yeah. And in that class, like I cue, even in these high level movements, I'm cueing their breath. I'm cueing their pelvic floor. I'm cueing their core. And I don't care if they've had a baby or not. It's still something that I'm like, well, you're going to be stronger and better protected if you implement this strategy baby or no baby because <laughs> it's a women's class in general. And so figure sooner they understand it, the better. Yeah. Such a great point. Um, something that I've talked about before, but I was a competitive gymnast from very young age and we did tons of leg raises, tons of jumping, tons of crunches, all mm-hmm. sorts of crazy core exercises and lots of impact type stuff. And going into pregnancy, I had a bit of a diastasis under my belly button from that exercise that I was doing when I was a teenager. And yeah. it's just, yeah, so interesting. It, it impacted my body as a young girl. And so it's, as you said, it's not just about pregnancy. It's not just about postpartum. Right. It's about bodies and lifting and exercise. Oh, totally. Yeah. And I wonder, like, I because I didn't know prior, and I'm like, well, I wonder if I just had a pre-existing diastasis from, you know, like, the amount of 
like an abdominal pressure that I used for, oh, I don't know, forever. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, breath holding for life. <laughs> totally. Yeah. And my go to is definitely rib thrusty. And I'm like, well, that's because I did it for 20 years in gymnastics. So right. no doubt we have these things that are difficult to kind of break down, like you're saying, break down the bad habits, build up the good ones, but right. it's not impossible. Right. And yeah, I'm just kind of like addressing each person individually, like who needs more cueing for this? Okay. It's like a chronic, you know, like bum tucker. And then this person's a rib thruster and that person's holding her breath for everything. So kind of figuring out like, you know, individually, you know, what these women really need. Yeah. Mm -hmm.